Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film. Horror Stories, Part 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with an insurance manager waking up from a nightmare. He calms down after realizing it is just a dream and begins wondering if he made the right decision in hiring a new employee. Just then, the manager hears a scream outside, revealing that it is his new employee named Young. She's being harassed by an insurance pair, threatening to burn down the office if they refuse to give him his money. The manager calmly steps in and removes the man's grip from her. As the man attempts to get his money, Young suddenly blurts out some kind of pleading, begging the man to get her out as it is hot. At that same time, the man's lighter lights by itself, burning him. Fear suddenly strikes the man, prompting him to run his way out. The manager dismisses that and kindly asks Young to go to the storage room with him. There, he reveals that he knows Young is gifted with the ability to communicate with dead people. One proof is what happened earlier. Young pleading to the man was actually from the man's dead wife, whom he killed in the fire in order to get her insurance. So to test her abilities, the manager picks out a doubtful case, gives it to Young, and lets her tell them what exactly happened. He believes it is a fabricated scenario, but Young thinks the other way. She then begins explaining what happened to prove her point. It begins with two men, Sung and Wook, who appear to be friends, going on a hike as a kind of tradition after investing some money. They decide to take a picture at the end of the dangerous and high cliff. Wook positions the camera before playfully pushing Sung, causing the rock to crack that is unbeknownst to them. The rock they're standing on cracks into pieces, causing them to fall off the edge as the camera takes the shot. Fortunately, there's a ledge under the cliff, saving them from death and only causing minor injuries. However, their phones are in the backpack and there's no way to go up or down, meaning they're stuck there until help comes. A chopper comes by, so the two men begin shouting for help, but their attempts are futile. Dehydrated and famished, Sung asks if he can share the snicker bar with him. However, Wook refuses as they don't know how long they will be there. That same night, the snicker bar from Wook's jacket packet suddenly disappears. Wook immediately blames Sung, who points out that it must have fallen when they jumped and shouted at the chopper. Wook removes the rocks behind him on the fifth day since distress, showing the snicker bar he had hidden from his friend. He sneakily takes a bite and prepares to return it when Sung suddenly talks behind him, asking if he could take a bite too. In shock, Wook accidentally drops the snicker bar. As Wook explains himself, Sung starts talking into the air, dreaming about his dad. Sung cries as he begs for his dad's forgiveness, prompting Wook to shout at him. Awake, Sung moves over to the edge and points the fallen snicker bar out to Wook. Sung grips Wook's arm as he reaches for the chocolate bar. As Sung confronts him about the bitten chocolate bar, Wook becomes defensive and accidentally loses grip on his arm. The following day, Wook writes a distress call for help on a bill note using his blood and lets the wind drive it away. That night, Wook attempts to get the snicker bar by himself, but he panics as he sees Sung's body moving up to him. Just then, a rescue helicopter searching for a man finds Wook, but then, when they see him, his eyes are already gray. A few days later, the hospital released Wook, who fortunately was found before death. He receives a box full of their belongings, but Wook calls the police, looking for the bill to keep as a souvenir. Wook believes the SOS on that bill note was the reason he was saved. However, the policeman informs him that the day before they found him, Sung's father fell to death at his construction site. Sung was the one they were looking for. Upon hearing this, Wook stops at the cemetery to pay respect and ask for forgiveness from Sung's father. Wook bows to pay respect, but the picture is suddenly gone as he looks up. Fear strikes Wook as he sees Sung's dad's spirit hanging upside down. He moves his head to the side in fear. Fortunately for him, the spirit is back in the picture frame when he looks back, but his nightmare is far from being done. That night when he's asleep, Wook finds himself on the ledge under the cliff and Sung rising from the grave, crawling his way up to him. This causes him to run out, only to be shocked again by Sung's brother. Brother informs Wook that a torn body part of Sung was found in the mountains, and the rest of his remains will be cremated tomorrow. Brother then asks to see the pictures they took before they fell off the cliff, so Wook takes the camera. However, upon seeing the pictures, Wook deletes Sung because they show him dragging Sung by the jacket as he slips off the cliff edge, making both of them fall. Nevertheless, Brother is smart to notice that he deleted some of the photos. Wook tries to deny it, but after imagining Sung's ghost in front of him, he eventually confesses the truth. He pleads with Brother not to tell anyone, who agrees with one condition. The following day, they go to the mountain to scatter Sung's ashes so he can rest in peace. As Wook ties his shoelace, he sees the SOS bill note under the leaves, which he takes. As they reach the edge, Brother hands the urn to Wook, claiming it would be better if he did it. 
Wook reluctantly takes it and opens it, only to find a snicker bar inside. Brother then reveals the truth to him. He knew that his brother bought stocks worth 20,000, but not a week later after Sung's death, Wook sold them and kept the money for his own. Wook tries to bribe Brother with the money, but he just smiles before pushing him over. Brother then reveals another shocking truth. The money that Sung used to buy the stocks was stolen from their father, and after learning the truth, their father killed himself. Desperate, Wook lets the distress bill fly into the wind, which reaches the police. However, they ignore it, as they think Wook has already been saved. That night, Sung's ghost terrifies Wook, and no one ever hears from him again. The scene then returns to the manager, who receives a call from his daughter, wanting some junk food. He firmly ignores his daughter's request and disconnects the call. He then gives another case to Young, claiming that the compensation for that case was suspicious. The story begins with a lady in an ambulance being saved by the paramedics. The flashback shows three friends drinking while driving on a highway after failing their teacher certification exam. As they drive recklessly, the inevitable happens as they fail to avoid an oncoming truck. Ji wakes up with little blood on her head like Mira, while the other friend named Broken Knee injures her left knee. Although alive, none of them had their phones working. Fortunately, Ji remembers the emergency phone box they pass by and thinks they reach that in less than an hour. They help Broken Knee to walk when Ji hears a faint voice behind them. She dismisses it after hearing her friends getting scared. However, as they reach the highway, Ji hears it again, but this time, the other two also hear it. They ignore it and get moving until they reach the emergency phone box. However, their hopes crashed upon seeing a web non-functioning phone box. Broken Knee breaks into tears in hopelessness, but her friends remain on her side to help her. Not long after, they see the light coming from a house not from afar, so they begin moving again. However, Ji hears the voice again. This time, it's clearly calling out to her, begging her not to leave. Scared, Broken Knee tells Ji not to leave her alone, which she promises not to do. They ignore the voice and walk again, stopping because of Broken Knee's injury. Mira then sees a man wearing alpine clothing passing by, so she quickly runs after him. However, she loses him, but as she turns her back, she sees the man revealed to be a ghost, watching them. More and more spirits then show up, prompting them to run for their shitty lives. Nevertheless, they get cornered when Broken Knee steps into a foot trap. Fortunately, the spirits vanish as an old man appears, revealing himself as the house's owner. He takes them inside and informs them that there's no electricity and phone. The old man then instructs Mira to come with him when he helps Broken Knee with her injury and firmly instructs Ji to stay inside until morning. Ji lights the shrine while waiting. However, she hears the voice calling out to her again, so Ji begins wandering the dark hallway to distract herself. She repeatedly calls out to her friends until she finds Ruth's triggering memories of her mother. The first is a child version of herself, crying on the streets while calling out to her mother. The second shows a teenage version of her, looking up at her mother, who ended her life by hanging herself. The painful memories vanish as Ji hears the old man's voice chanting some kind of prayer. She then follows his voice. Ji cannot hide her shock as she sees her friends tied up while the old man performs some kind of demonic ritual. They call out for her help, catching the old man's attention, who reveals himself as inhuman. Left with no choice, Ji runs for her life. As she gets out, the house vanishes. Ji continues to run until morning, passing by the cornfield and ignoring the spirits coming after her. As she returns to the highway, Ji hears the siren of the ambulance nearby, so she promptly runs to the site. However, she only sees the paramedics putting Broken Knee and Mira's bodies into body bags, and the last body found by the police is hers, revealing that they never survived the crash, and all that they experienced from there were not real. Ji soon finds herself in the hospital, where she discovers through a mirror that her spirit has left her body. The old man turns out to be the Grim Reaper, and the voice she keeps hearing is actually her poor mother, begging her to hold on to life, but it's already too late. The scene returns to Young, who sees black energy coming to the manager after holding his phone. Although she knows something is up, Young doesn't say something to him, who gives her the third and the most mysterious case he knows. The story begins with a trainee teacher nicknamed Nerd, who used to be bullied at school because of his nerdiness. A co-worker warns him about the students and the school. It's full of blackmailing, violence, gambling, bullying, and even students that worship Satan. He advises Teacher Nerd to be aware at all times, as all students are no exemption. Teacher Nerd reluctantly steps into his classroom, only to be tripped by one of his students. This causes a domino effect. He gets his foot stuck in a bucket. When he attempts to take it off, the bucket flies into the air and lands on his head. He steps into his long pants, causing the suspenders to detach, revealing his lower nakedness to the class. 
The girls silently hold their phones in video and take photos of their professor in the humiliating moment. Left with no dignity, teacher nerd goes to the rooftop to kill himself. However, his fear of heights does not help, especially when one of his students, Tanhee, suddenly appears. She is obsessed with black magic, so she offers him a spell to enter another world. Teacher nerd doesn't believe her smelly bullshit, but Tanhee rebuts that her sister's friends are still missing after they tried the spell. The instructions are simple. Get into an elevator and stop by on some floors holding salt water from the salt brine in his mouth. A girl will get on the fourth floor, but he must not look at her at all costs. The inhuman girl will press on the first floor, but if it goes up, it means he's going to another world. He needs to get out on the eighth floor, and when the girl talks to him, he must not say nor move, and will only spit the brine once the elevator leaves. That day, Teacher Nerd buys salt and water from the south as his mother instructed. Although doubtful, Teacher Nerd takes the brine into his mouth before entering the elevator and performing the ritual. Unexpectedly, a girl indeed enters the lift from the fourth floor, striking fear in him. The inhuman girl presses the first floor, causing Teacher Nerd to slide onto the floor in a panic, but impressively holding the brine in his mouth as the spell instructed. As he reaches the eighth floor, Teacher Nerd immediately gets out, but stops after hearing the inhuman girl talking to him. Teacher Nerd keeps still and only lets out of the brine after hearing the elevator leaving. Everything seems normal and unchanged, so he immediately drops the groceries on the table and goes to the bathroom to take a shit. However, he receives a call from his mom, informing him that she will be late as she's at her aunt's. Careful, teacher nerd goes to the kitchen and finds a woman, definitely not his mom chopping their food. With her terrifying and deep voice, she instructs teacher nerd to go to his room, which he does without further ado, after realizing that he is indeed in another world. Teacher nerd finds their family picture with family members looking strange in their white faces, square jaws, lion eyes, and no noses. Still terrified, Teacher Nerd magically contacts Tanhee, informs her about what happened, and begs for her help as she's the expert with black magic. Tanhee agrees and warns him not to meet the eyes of his otherworldly family, or he will stay there forever. His mom then calls him for dinner, to which he reluctantly obliges. Teacher Nerd tries to survive that dinner, even with all the crazy things happening. His dad reaches for anything with his incredibly long tongue. He discovers that the meat his mom chopped earlier was actually her left arm. He also endures the bowl of maggots and crosses his eyes to avoid meeting their eyes. But that's not all. He also vomits hundreds of maga eggs on the table, which his mom claims will be their food for tomorrow. Back in his room, Teacher Nerd calls Tanhee again, who instructs him to jump out from the terrace at Midnight Shark, but he needs to speak the spell Escape while falling. Accidentally, Teacher Nerd discovers his so-called family listening to his conversation. After calming down, Teacher Nerd discovers he can reach the terrace through his bedroom window. That night, he waits for the clock to hit 12, before stepping up on the rail and screaming the spell. However, his dad fixes the clock as it's five minutes slow. Tanhee reaches for her friend's help, who fortunately know the other way. He finds a pair of scissors, before going to the bathroom alone as instructed. They then instruct him to put his pee in his mouth, which he reluctantly does. He then turns the shower on, and flushes the toilet hard until blood appears. Blood comes out of the shower too. His so-called mom and dad will try to open the door hard, but he must not open it, or he will die. Teacher Nerd puts his phone in a Ziploc bag, as blood comes out everywhere and fills the bathtub. He blocks the door and the toilet before going to the bathtub. Teacher Nerd submerges himself into the literal pool of blood while holding the pee in his mouth. He only comes out a few moments later, when he cannot hold his breath anymore. This time, he finds himself in the gates of hell. Even in that place, Teacher Nerd can still magically contact Tanhee, who cannot help but be amazed at what just happened. Tanhee warns him that evil spirits will come. He will finish the nightmare once he pokes his eyes with the scissors while screaming the spell. Tanhee asks for a picture of hell before letting her trainee teacher get on with his business. Feeling confident now, Teacher Nerd takes a photo of hell before poking his eyes with the scissors and screaming the spell. However, one of Tanhee's friends reveals that the particular ritual only works for girls, not boys. The story ends with Teacher Nerd dying in hell, while Tanhee receives a picture of an evil spirit that Teacher Nerd had taken. The scene returns to Young, who keeps seeing the black energy following the manager. Young reveals that she knew he would take advantage of her ability, once he proved her ability. So she gives him one last chance to say something to his family, as his time is running out because he is cursed. The manager only believes her when the dark energy pushes him to the evil spirits hiding behind the walls. They are clinging onto his body, slowly dragging him to hell. As he vanishes, a pool of blood comes out of the hallway, along with his phone. 
The film ends with Young mumbling that she hates doing the afterwork, subtly confessing that this is not the first time she has done this while mopping the blood. This reveals that many others have been dragged to hell after trying to abuse Young's ability for their gain. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.